Dolphin fans, Mitchell Renz here from Chat Sports breaking down this Dolphins rumors mailbag. We asked you to go ahead and submit your Dolphins questions on our YouTube community channel. And I said, you know what? I'm only going to pick people who are subscribed. So we went through, we picked our favorites that were subbed, and that's how you're going to be able to get featured on the show. If you want to get featured on next week's mailbag, well, go ahead, click that big red button that says subscribe. The first question coming in here is from Jose Lopez. If the Dolphins goes for a running back in the draft, should they go for Najee Harris or Travis Etienne? This is a fun question, and obviously the Dolphins have a need at running back because as great as what Gaskin's been, I think is even as great as what Ahmad's been, they wanted a new running back. It's why they went out and got Jordan Howard, who, thank God, he's gone. And they also tried to obviously get a running back in Matt Breida. Neither of them worked. So will you either go after the power running back in Najee Harris, type NH, or would you take Travis Etienne from Clemson, type TE? I like Harris a lot. He's a fun power running back, but Etienne is the best running back in this year's draft. 68 total touchdowns in his career at Clemson. He can do it all. He had 24 and, what was it, 24 rushing touchdowns in 2018. He had like 19. He's had 12 this year. It's been a strange year, but this guy continues to get better and better. I'm typing my TE for Travis TTN. All right, next guy coming in, Ian Reed. What's up, brother? Who do you think the Dolphins will draft? Obviously, this is a fun question because Miami, they have four picks in the top 50. That's entertaining, but it's hard to look into the future, so I'm going to look at the picks that they have with their very first overall pick. If I'm Miami, if I'm Brian Flores, I'm like, okay, what are some of the biggest areas that I need to be able to improve on? Obviously, offensive line is one, however, where the Dolphins are picking, and maybe if Penny Sewell's there, I would consider it, but I don't think that that's the route that they're going to go. I'm looking at Jamar Chase from LSU, continue to build around Tua, or linebacker from Penn State, Micah Parsons. Love both of these players. Yes, both of them sat out this year due to COVID, but both of these guys are legit. Probably the number one receiver in Chase from LSU. Probably the one number one linebacker, Micah Parsons from hmm, linebacker U. Penn State, shout out. JT, you're next up here on our Dolphins Rumors mailbag. Oh, boy, this is... Grammarly. You guys need Grammarly. Why is the Dolphins the best team in the NFL? Well, JT, I have been impressed by Dolphins fans. Y'all been showing out. You've been showing up. And I challenged you guys on Sunday. Let's get this channel to 7,000 subscribers. And this week alone, we've had 500 new ones. It is simple as this. The more subscribers this channel gets, the more videos, yes, this is the company I work for, Chat Sports, we are allowed to make from you. Whether it's me, whether it's Tom, whether it's somebody else here at Chat Sports, if you guys find yourself always looking for Dolphins videos, hit that big red button that says subscribe, and guess what? Once we get more subs, we can make more videos. So go ahead, see that red button, click it, I dare you. All right, next one coming in here is from Snowmonster420. Not going to make any assumptions, but Snow, 420, you might have a drug issue. <laughs> kidding, kidding. Why don't Mike Gesicki get more credit for being one of the receiving tight ends? All right, you mean one of the best receiving tight ends in the league? Does, oh man, does Xavier Howard get any votes for Defensive Player of the Year if he gets 10-plus interceptions this year? Fins up. I'll say this. We'll start with Xavier Howard because I talked about this on my show earlier in the week where Howard right now for me is the best cornerback in the National Football League. He shows up every single week, and sure, the addition of Byron Jones has helped a lot because teams aren't really targeting Byron as much, but no egg monogamy has been an absolute disaster, as you all know. And Howard, when he's healthy, he is not shown just this year, but he has shown realistically over the last three years when he is healthy, he's the best in the league. I mean, look at these numbers. 15 interceptions over his last 28 games. Those 28 games are over the last three seasons, but those numbers are ridiculous. Dunculous. Like, they're laughably good. So, yes, I do think Howard is up there. And in terms of Mike Gusecki, I, I actually think he is one of the best receiving tight ends in the league. The issue for him is, well, he can't block as well, so he doesn't get as much, I'll say, attention from the media. And also the offense with Tua is a little bit different. You had Ryan Fitzpatrick in there, and fantasy owners going to be absolutely loving him. We're going to go to this next question here. And on chat sports, I always pick on people when you don't get a picture. Y'all can see me. I want to see you. So going forward, if you don't have one, I'm going to say, hey, get a picture. Derek, what up, brother? Should the Dolphins sign Aaron Jones, Allen Robinson, Joe Tooney, 
or Taylor Morton. I believe you mean Taylor Morton in free agency next year. Yes, it is a heavy, heavy load of free agents. And if you guys want to see our top 2021 free agents list, go to the Chat Sports YouTube channel. We're getting close to 225K there and check it out. But you know what? I'm going to make you guys pick one to sign. If you're going to go for the running back Aaron Jones type AJ, maybe you want Joe Tooney at guard type JT, Al Robinson AR, Taylor Mott and TM. Out of the names on this list, I'm going to go out and get Allen Robinson. That is if you don't take a guy like Jamar Chase in the first round. But again, I am going to continue to try to build around Tua. And as much as I love Aaron Jones and as much as I think it's a need, I'm not going to pay a running back, and you're going to have to pay Aaron Jones. Salvador Renneria. There you go. You got yourself a picture. All right, this is the, uh, by the way, this is just the Tua part of the show. If Tua is not ready for the Bengals, should we start him against the Chiefs? Two has been battling an injury. He missed this past week. I thought Ryan Fitzpatrick played a great game. But if he's not able to go, do you start him against the Chiefs? Obviously not. But if he is ready to play, Brian Flores has made every single indication that he is going to play Tua when he is fully healthy. And it is as simple as this. Tua is the future. And if the Miami Dolphins not want to just make the playoffs, but be a team that's really truly a Super Bowl contending team, you need Tua who you drafted number five overall this past year to be everything that you were hoping he could be. So even if he's not ready to play against the Bengals, if he can play against the Chiefs, yeah, I, I would say go ahead and play him. James Curtis, are you a golfer? What's your handicap? Mine's probably like a solid 60. I am terrible at golf. Does Chan Gailey trust to a going deep? I don't believe that he does because when you look at the game film over the last four weeks, the yards per attempt continue to go down. 4.5 yards per completion this past game. Tua was actually one of the best deep-throwing quarterbacks in all of college football. He might not have this elite arm talent, but his ability to throw the deep ball very effectively, it does remind me a lot of Russell Wilson, who doesn't have this extremely strong arm, but extremely accurate, can chuck it down the field. But at this point, no, I don't believe that Chan Gailey does have full confidence in Tua chucking it down the field. Speaking of Tua, we got a special deal going on. Who needs some new Tua gear? I don't know about you, that Tua jersey you see on screen, $79.99. All you got to do, go to chatsports.com slash Tua. There's been a lot of hype around the young rookie quarterback, so we're going to try to get you guys some new deals. That jersey you see on screen, that one's actually $99.90. It's all good. The next t-shirt you see here, this is usually $34. It's actually only $26.99. Bottom line is this, holidays right around the corner. I'm trying to be able to see my family, and I know if I'm going to go see my family, I'm also going to be wearing a face mask. So if you need a stocking stuffer, you need something to put underneath your tree, or, you know, hey, I, I won't tell anyone. If you just want to get yourself something, it's all good. Go to chatsports.com slash Tua. We got new Tua gear on sale. Jerseys, 80 bucks and under. Also, the t-shirts, they're like 25% off. Go get yourself something new or someone that you love. Chatsports.com slash Tua. Next question coming in from Jaime. Get a pick. Based on Tua's game, would it be a good idea to build the offense around a dual tight end set, i.e. what the Patriots ran when they had Gronk and Aaron Hernandez? I don't totally hate the idea of running a two tight end set. The biggest issue here is for Miami, you don't have the personnel to run that two tight end set that the New England Patriots did. And it's nothing against Durham Smythe. I love me some Durham Smythe. He knows exactly what his role is. He does it great. Same with Adam Shaheen. And Mike Gusecki is one of the best... Best receiving tight ends in all of football. But even as great as Mike Gusecki is, I actually think that Gusecki is not as good as what Aaron Hernandez was at his prime. And Hernandez was the second best tight end on that team with Gronk. They ran two tight end sets because of how elite Gronk and Hernandez was. I mean, you were looking at three, or two out of the top three tight ends in the National Football League. If that's what you're trying to do, maybe you go out and draft another tight end. I'm trying to think of the guy's name from Florida. It's escaping me, but he's my number one tight end. What's his name? Kyle Pitts, that's the name. Thank you. Shout out to Bruce Dillon. Everyone type Dillon in the comments. Kyle Pitts, if you want to try to run something like that, Pitts and Gusecki would might work. However, it's not the route I would go. Scott Carrier, question of the day. Okay, well, we'll see. Here we go. Unfortunately, I'm already looking at your comment, and there's not even a question mark. So how can it be question of the day? We all <laughs> know we need a good backup to Tua as we have four picks in the top 50 or do we draft another young quarterback to compete with Tua? Or build the line to pick up a backup in free agency? Or is Sinek going to compete? Okay, if you draft a quarterback in the top five, there's no reason to then draft a backup the very next year. Two is your future. You build around Tua. You don't want to have a situation where 
fans are going to be calling for another player. Let's say if Tua has a few up and down games. Like, don't do what the Packers did. You should build around Aaron Rodgers what they did. Instead, they drafted Jordan Love, and that's been an absolute disaster. Build the offensive line, even though you do have some young pieces there. But your future is Tua. Build around him. And I'm going to say it over and over again. Build around Tua. No need to draft a young quarterback. Luca Bubbles, have the Dolphins made a blueprint for the future rebuilds of other teams? I like this question a lot. I have been saying for a very, very long time that Brian Flores deserves a lot of credit for being not just coach of the year, but how they really have transformed this Dolphins team. I mean, last year, Miami was one of the worst teams in the National Football League. I believe they had like a point differential of minus, it's like 150, something wild. This year, it has been a totally different story, and they have totally transformed that defense. So what I want you guys to do is rate the Dolphins' season so far. Scale from 0 to 100. I predicted the Dolphins to go 7-9. and nine. It looks like I'm going to be wrong because they are currently sitting at 7-4. and four. They've been doing a phenomenal job. They faced a lot of adversary. Is that how you say it? I'm not sure. At the beginning of the year, when they lost Al or Albert Wilson, they lost Alan Hearns, he lost a lot of other players just deciding to opt out. If I'm a Dolphins fan, I would be very pleased here with how they played. I'm going to rate the season so far a 90 out of 100, but hey, let me know down in the comments section. Fins 1, do the Dolphins have a top 5 defense in the National Football League? Not only do they have a top 5 defense, they have the most underrated defense in all of football. I know they're not top 5 in yards, but to be honest, I, I don't give a shit about yards. I care about points, and the Dolphins have shown this season they really lock it down they're a bend, but don't break defense. And you're allowing 18.6 points per game. That is second best in the National Football League. So if anybody out there gives you stats about yards, passing yards per game, but shut up. <laughs> shut up. I don't want to hear it. It's points per game. That's what matters. And all the injuries that this team's even had continue. A great, great job by this team. So, yes, they are a top five defense. Got a few more questions. I do believe this actually is the last one. And I, in Aiki, uh, try Try Baldos. I have no idea if I got that right. Probably not. Is Gaskin splitting snap with, with Ahmad once he's back? I do anticipate that's gonna, going to be the case. Gaskin's been fun. Ahmad's also been solid as well. Also look for a guy like DeAndre Washington, who this past week led the team in rushing with 49 rushing yards, I believe, on 13 carries. They're going to go with a bunch of different kind of backs, see who's got the hot hand, and then go forward. But I also think it's this. Which running back can block the best? Because if two is in the game, you're going to have a running back that can block a little bit more. If it's Ryan Fitzpatrick, they might roll the dice a little bit more with Gaskin. If you made it this far in the video, again, hit that big red button that says subscribe and take that link, youtube.com slash Dolphins News. Send it to five Dolphins fans. Let's get to 7K by Sunday.